Alrighty, so we are starting on this bunny. And um, you might be looking at this and thinking like this is a beginner course. It's, it's kind of a little bit in between a uh, beginner and advanced. Um, I picked this course because I really wanted to focus on the fur and really get to know how to do fur because that is kind of what most of this bunny is, is all fur and um, big ears and an eye. So we are going to be really focusing on fur in this uh, course. And of course, we're going to start off with our eye, as we usually do, as I usually do. You don't have to. But um, that is going to be the main focus. And that is why I am putting it in the beginner series. Take your time with it, as always. Um, go as slow, as fast as you need to. You could always speed it up by clicking on that little um, cog in the lower right hand corner and um, changing the, um, the speed of the video if you like. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna start off with the eye, as I was saying, and I'm gonna go ahead and go into it with some of the lightest colors. I'm starting with the cream from the Pablos. Um, and I also did beforehand take my kneaded eraser and just dabbing with the outline here. And let's go ahead and zoom into that eye. <clears throat> All right, so it's a pretty small eye that we're doing here. Um, I always have my pencils sharp when I'm working with the eye in general, but definitely with this eye being that it's really this small, I mean, it's as big as my fingernail here, which they're pretty short. I'm taking a nice sharp cream from the Pablos and I'm going to add in some of the little highlights around here. Just making really tiny marks in here where my lights are going to be. All right, so that was just a couple little marks in there. Now I'm going to go in with my dark indigo. Let's go ahead and create a nice little outline here. Nice outline around the eye itself. And going in there, in, in with um, small strokes. Pretty light pressure, so not pressing hard. And it has a really large iris, excuse me, pupil. There's a pupil there. So sometimes those smaller eyes, we aren't going to get quite all the details in here. Um, that's okay. I think we're, as long as we still get some like really good lighting in here, it's going to look pretty nice. So here I am going in, um, to the iris and I'm going towards the pupil. So as I go around the eye, I'm always going from out to in. You can go from in to out and making these nice dark streaks. They're, they're pretty solid in the reference photo, so we're definitely gonna build up those layers. And let's go in with our light blue. What color did I pick for that blue? Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to go in with the Prussian blue and we're going to go over it with the um, Payne's gray and some white to lighten, uh, uh, to lighten it up. 
but it is pretty a beautiful blue it's just a lot more muted and a lot lighter than this uh, Prussian blue so here we're getting into like the truest of color mixing here um, we're gonna take this this vivid rich blue and we're gonna mute it and we're gonna lighten it in the iris and we're just gonna do this with a few different colors And then I'm going to take my Payne's, <clears throat> Payne's Gray 30% and going over it. Now let's take a little bit of white. Sharpen up my white pencil here. <laughs> is white from the Pablo's whatever white you have um, will work perfectly perfectly fine all right so now we took that vivid rich bold um, Persian blue and we we got it nice and muted and lightened lightened it up quite a bit didn't we and that was just a few little layers right there Take the light cobalt, light cobalt blue. Where is it? And let's go ahead and sharpen this up. And I'm going into the highlight with this light cobalt blue. going to be my main background and trying to avoid where I have the cream nice light pressure in there Okay, and I'm gonna go in with a little bit uh, more of the Prussian blue into the highlight, just just a little bit. So you can see some shadows within that highlight. I want to pull those out a little bit. I'm slowly building up those layers. And then let's take our dark indigo. Um, oh, sorry. Let's go in with the white before we go in with our darks. Um, so I just want to lighten it up, blend a little bit more over here. All right, just a few little, little pencil strokes that, there with the uh, white. And now I'm going in with the dark indigo. So like, I don't, I don't know what the reflections are. Sometimes it really doesn't matter too much. You just want to really capture, capture them. Almost imagine like there are branches of the tree or something. So we are going from light to dark. So we haven't put our dark darks in. So the eye does look a little bit a little strange, a little unusual, but that is perfectly fine. So we are just slowly building up those layers and okay, I'm liking that. Let's go in with some black. All 
All right, so I like to at least get a few lights down before I go in with my super dark darks. I'm going into the pupil here. So now the eye starts to look a little bit more normal. So we don't see the whole pupil here because half of it is covered by the highlight, but we do get like an indication that it's there. And of course our brains, you know, we know that the pupil is round. Um, and we just get a few little indications of the upper portion of the pupil, even though we don't fully see it, we see that highlight. So I'm kind of going into the highlight. Um, and just putting a few dark marks where that pupil would be. All right, I just had to put my pencil on the extender because it was getting really hard to hold. It was um, very short. So going around the iris once again, we don't see the whites of the eye, usually in smaller smaller animals like rabbits, and mice and rats, and um, hedgehogs, and, and a lot of dogs. Um, we don't see the whites of the eye. They're there, they're just that their iris kind of takes up, you know, all the visible parts that we often see. So I'm creating the outline around the eye, and then I'm also pulling in to the eye and creating that texture, the iris. The iris has that little striations within it. Um, I don't want it to be too black. I'm gonna go back over it with um, probably some indigo, but I do wanna create a nice dark outline. So I'm looking at my, my reference photo on my iPad. If you're just using the printout, that's perfectly fine. Just um, want to make sure that you get a nice, generous uh, print of the printout so you can get all those details of the eye. And um, I think that, you know, is definitely more than good enough. All right, let's go back to that indigo. So just building up our layers, taking our time, enjoying the process. And again, I am going over the black, going, going in with a firmer pressure now. And I want to indicate where the highlight is because it is getting a little bit lost in the rest of the, the lighter portion of the iris in the lower part of the, um, in the lower part of the eye. I just want to give hints of the iris up here. Just a couple little round pencil strokes. And let's see. I like to go in with a Payne's Gray. 
I don't usually sharpen all my pencils as often, only with the eye. Um, Payne's Gray is a wonderful color. It's kind of like a dark, it's a dark gray with a blue, a slightly blue hue to it. So Payne's Gray would be in like the category of cooling grays because it has that blue hue. And um, you know, as you draw, as you go along here, you're gonna get a feel for cool grays and um, warm grays. So warm grays will have more of a brown or a red tone to it, like the French grays um, are definitely a lot more warm. If you have the polychromos pencils, um, <clears throat> they're definitely gonna have that brown and a hint of, you know, red kind of feel to it. It's not a straight up red or a straight up brown, but there is kind of, uh, in comparison to the cool blues, it feels like a brown or a red in those warm grays. So I hope that um, explanation makes a little bit more sense. Um, that's kind of how I make sense of things, especially when I'm looking at my reference photo and trying to decide, does this need a warm gray or a cool gray? Sometimes it'd be very hard to tell because it could be very neutral in the sense of warm or cooling, and you could just use a neutral gray as well. All right. <clears throat> Going in with my Tombow Zero Eraser. And actually, I might need my electric eraser. <clears throat> really light pressure, just kind of emphasizing that um, blue iris. bit hard to talk when I'm like trying to get into this very minute detailed work but I'm holding the eraser on the side I'm kind of trying to go for um, the tiniest edge and getting that nice those pulling out those nice highlights So one thing to keep in mind when you're using the electric eraser is, you know, it is it is um, going round and round. So you don't want it to kick your hand off into one direction. Um, you want to hold it firmly in the place that you want it to and kind of, you know, you just get used to that little kick that it gives. Um, it's not really that much. I don't know. I don't really notice it that much anymore. But I think like in the beginning, you you would. Um, and the great thing about electric erasers is like you could just get these minute little areas and uh, they're just they're just superb I love the electric eraser um, so that is looking pretty good let's kind of expand that people a little bit more. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now I want to go into this area around the eye, kind of like that little bit of skin before the fur starts. And make sure if you're using the outline that I uh, provided that's great but if you're creating your own um you know i would always say the more detailed your outline the better so drawing these little outlined areas around the eye that little bit of skin um, between the eye and the fur is going to be a huge help to you um, i think one of the most and i'm using a granite rose from pablo's but one of the most um, important things with drawing is just having a solid outline. 
Um, I don't know if I could emphasize it enough, but your outline is going to set the foundation for your whole drawing from start to finish and everything in between. Okay, that was Granite Rose, so now I'm going to head on over to the Sepia 10%. Um, and I still want my pencils to be rather sharp here because we're working with a small area. It's when we get into the fur that um, dollar pencils are will work fine. And I oftentimes really um, hesitate to sharpen my pencils because it does eat them up and you'll go through your color pencils quickly. But they do last a long time if you don't sharpen them too much. Iris just needs a little, little bit more, oh, excuse me, pupil. Such a big iris, but it's the pupil that I want to work on here. Just wanted it a little bit, be a little bit more round on that edge. I think that's good. Uh, let's see what color was I working with? Sepia 10, 10%. So we got nice light layer of the granite rose and then the sepia on top. And then it definitely gets a little bit darker there. Well, what color shall we use for that upper uh, corner of the eye, above the eye? I think I'm gonna go grab the charcoal from the Pablo's. sepia Ooh, so I have the sepia from the polychromos and I'm gonna go under the eye let's sharpen it I'm gonna go under the eye Uh, so sepia kind of has like this um, brown gray gray color. I feel like sepia on its own is not particularly an attractive color. Um, kind of joke that it's my favorite ugly color because uh, it's so versatile. I feel like I use um, dark sepia in most all my portraits because humans and animals I always feel like it just calls for it. So that kind of gray brown, it brings about like the earthiness and um, yeah, it's just a, a wonderful color. So I'm doing these nice little, little pencil strokes going out from the eye following that fur. So we just start to get a hint of it. going to go over this area. I'll go over that area with a different color. Let's grab the Mars Violet. Also a very good color to use. And I'm just going to go under that eye. Um, I'm going to take the white. Maybe just kind of like a highlight there. And with firm pressure and nice sharp pencil, creating that edge. 
Now maybe it's a little too thick and that is easily remedied um, by going back in with our sepia and just making it a little bit, a um, little bit thinner because it is quite thin there. Violet once again. Going into this region. Upper right portion of the eye. And drawing it in nice and light. The Mars Violet is great because it's like this gray, uh, light gray purple, light gray violet. Some people just prefer to say violet, not purple. I like to say both. And back in with the dark sepia, a little, just a little bit over here. some black mainly in this upper left portion of the eye so it's pretty dark around here starts to bring it together and just a couple little medium pressure pencil strokes under the eye So I'm really studying my reference photo I'm you know looking back and forth like I look at the you know, looking at my drawing, looking at the reference photo, looking, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Um, so I'm never just looking at my drawing for long periods of time without referring back to that reference photo. And then, and then you have this video to watch, so I <laughs> got a few things to look at. Um, but definitely study that reference photo. Don't neglect it. It's always about drawing what what we see and not what we think we see is the key here, um, especially for portrait, portrait artists. Um, if that is what you decide to do, you know, the person who commissions you is always going to expect that, um, you know, level of realism and likeness to the, to the subject that they, um, you know, they want. So. Constantly studying the reference photo. Alrighty, liking that eye. That's really good. So it was simple, um, nothing too complex. Um, you know, I, I guess it depends <laughs> where everybody is at, but hopefully um, that was pretty enjoyable. So let's move to that fur. All right, so now we are moving into the fur around the eye. I'm going to just take my kneaded eraser, dab away any little excess um, pencil, you know, outlines here so we can still see the outline, but it is much, much lighter. So 
There we go. Um, and I'm gonna start off with the cold gray one from the Polychromos. And I'm just gonna start off with some light, light layers here. Now, my pencil strokes are really reflecting the, uh, the fur, the length of the fur. It's gonna be a little bit all clustered together until you can get like a mix of colors in there. Just having the cold gray one, is, it's gonna look like a blob of cold gray. And so once we get in some like sepia, some Payne's gray um, and so forth, then the fur is really gonna start to shine through. So trust the process. And until then, let's go ahead and just kind of put down a nice light layer. There's some lighter layers I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to go in them, go in with them. I'm going to mix it up between warm grays, cold grays, um, and you'll see what I mean. We'll get we'll get a whole mixture of that in there, and you'll get a feel for that. So with fur, it seems so intimidating, and you know I, I, it is. It's hard. Um, I don't want to, you know, dumb down my struggles that I've had with it and continue to have with it and as well as yours. Um, but it is doable, it's approachable. And once we can kind of get over that mental aspect of, you know, this is too hard for me, I can't do it. Um, it's like you can do it. You just have to take it one step at a time. So that being said, um, we are going in layers here and we are going in with the cold gray and we're going to build up those layers and it's just, um, yeah, it's just a process, just a process of building up those layers. <clears throat> so sometimes you can really go in with a small area and work on that small area and then, you know, then start the new area kind of doing its whole, kind of the whole forehead here, getting the whole forehead with the cold gray. I'm going to lighten up. Let's expand this out a little bit more. So we make sure that we get and then push it up. All right, so we want to get this whole area in here. So lightening up my uh, outlines, not completely getting rid of them, but lightening them up. So I'm going in the direction of the fur. This is where really studying your reference photo, I'm going back and forth with my eyes constantly, really comes in. And I'm almost like coloring in the whole area here. I still want to stay true to the length of the fur. I don't want my, my pencil strokes to be like, you know, back and forth like this. Um, I want them to be nice and short because you are building up the character from like the very first pencil stroke that you lay down. And you want to stay true to the, stay true to the subject. Um, don't get lazy. This is an opportunity to really enjoy yourself. Um, make it meditative, make it relaxing. You know, let yourself get lost in your color pencil drawing. Get into the flow. If you're into uh, studying the flow state, kind of nice when that happens and then hours pass by and you're like, oh, wow. You were just in the, in that really relaxed state of mind. All right, so we can always come back to this cold gray. Um, let's go ahead and lay down a few darks. Um, let's go with the Payne's gray. And so I'm gonna go over pretty light here. So my outline, I can still see my outline around here. Um, and yeah, you can see it in the video very well. And again, just kind of studying my reference photo. And this is where it really comes into play. Um, the, the pencil strokes that you are using, you want them to very much be going in the direction of the fur. 
and you'll notice that my pencil strokes are all slightly different from each other. So one kind of goes this way, another one kind of goes that way, another one goes straight. Uh, you don't want them all in the same exact um, direction because then it looks, it doesn't look real. So really study how, like look how I'm, I'm laying down these pencil strokes. They're all kind of slightly going in different directions, but yet they are going in somewhat of the same direction and it's creating that realistic effect. So we don't always think about blue in fur, but when I'm looking at this area, I'm seeing like some blue as well as some um, browns in there as well. But these darker areas, it's definitely a cool gray to me and that's how I'm, I'm translating it in my mind. So I don't want to color in all the darks. Um, I'm just kind of going around here. It looks uh, like a blue gray to me. Up here, <clears throat> it looks like a more blue gray to me. But then kind of like in between here, there's this like, I don't know, it's kind of more brown, creamy, creamy brown. Um, so let's just throw a little bit of that in so you kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, hmm. Kind of trying to pick my my weapon of choice here. So I'm seeing a little bit of the creams. I'm wondering if this is, I'm not sure the cream is going to be dark enough for what I want. Yeah, that's not, that is not coming through. And hmm, what about, All right, I went with the Naples Ochre um, from the Luminance. Um, I'm not pressing hard here. It's not like obviously this yellow cream. Um, it's going to definitely have some gray on top, so it's not going to look like this weird yellow um, splotches in the fur. That's just kind of bizarre. So this is kind of where you have to trust a process where you see perhaps colors that don't seem like they make sense, um, but, but they do. And once we really, once you really dive into color pencils, you're going to be seeing like oranges and reds and purples and blues in, in the fur. And it's just like, hmm, you know, you might be scared to use it, but I am giving you permission to use those odd and unusual colors in the fur because it's really going to make it pop and we're really going to create some awesome, awesome outcomes. All right. Hey, so liking the way that looks. Now we're going to go to our um, deep, uh, dark sepia. Deep sepia, dark sepia. And we're going to go over, very lightly, um, over, over that Naples ochre. Keep 
keeping it pretty light. Hop around here a little bit back to the Payne's Gray. Kind of like a nice little dark pattern right up here in her forehead, top of her head. I just automatically called it a her. <laughs> so, no idea if it's a her or he. like a nice little dark spot here kind of feeling like that's a cooler dark gray um, and you'll notice I kind of twist my pencil I just do it automatically now I don't even think about it but it's you know looking for that new sharp edge by doing that So I'm varying up my pressure. I'm continuously, you know, studying my reference photo and where it just calls for a lighter shade, I'm going in with lighter pressure and where it gets a little bit darker, going in a little bit firmer, but not too much. We're gonna also be switching up the grays here in a minute. I got some cool grays in here as well. Also try to find kind of like the patterns um, in the fur, like a patch will be moving in a certain direction and we'll have, you know, I feel like here kind of goes up and over and then we have like this whole round area in here. going for like for me kind of the the spots of the patterns that look the most obvious um so I'm kind of hopping around her forehead a little bit and then we'll get into more of those nuanced mid-tones here because I'm going in with the dark tones um, you know my dark value my darkest values of the fur okay uh, let's go to some warm gray ah uh, see not not the warm gray ones and then a little bit darker than Warm gray one, I kind of grab that, but want something a little bit more. Uh, so warm gray from the light fest. It's really nice. I'm gonna go over this Naples or ochre a little bit. Uh, Naples ochre, yes, uh, a little bit more.
And if you don't have any of the light fast, you could always use the warm grays from the polychromos. Go back to some cool gray. Um, let's see, do I want cool gray four? Good work. Um, do I want something darker? I think. You know, I'm thinking the cool gray four is nice. <laughs> so these are more my mid-tones, something in between, not too light, not too dark. And because we're going over that cool gray one, it's not going to show up as dark. So I'm looking for those more uh, minute patterns in here. I kind of feel like I see these little rows of dark that go across her, um, the top of her head, and just in front of those ears. She is pretty darn adorable, isn't she? Just wanna snuggle her up. So. I'm keeping on with that. Back and forth with the preference photo. And even taking this cold gray over that Naples yellow just to kind of tone it down, mute it, mute it a little bit more. So muting it by making it less bright, the opposite of muting our colors is bright. And that can come in so many different variations depending on, uh, depending on our subject, depending on the color we use. So here we just kind of want to mute it a little bit. So I have a couple of dark um, like whiskers above her eye. That's gonna go in last. Coming along. And now I'm doing like little clusters here and there as I move down her forehead. this Payne's gray that I did. Um, and I like to go over my darks with the midtones. Kind of helps like uh, blend things in and really kind of makes it more cohesive. Um, I'm going to keep going with that, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my electric eraser and I'm just going to pull out some lights here. So 
out. I am wanting the tip uh, so I could use the edge of it and then I can pull out nice little highlight hairs. Um, I'm telling you this electric eraser is very much a lifesaver. And I think with the electric eraser, I use it to draw more than I use it to erase. Well, I, I should say both, but in this case, it's like we are very much drawing with it. So I'm just taking the edge. Just a very light pressure. to approach the electric eraser um, often more often than not is I'll lay down some pigment I'll you know pull I'll pull out some highlights and then I just go over it again and you know I'll, I'll very much do a lot of layers um, just like that so going back in with my gold gray four and we're just gonna keep on building up those layers in there So don't ever think of the eraser of, uh, you know, using the eraser as like, oh, I, I messed up, I need to use the eraser now. It's like, no, or it's very much a part of the drawing process. Um, and yeah, sometimes you lay down some pigment and you're like, oh, that was a little too, that was not quite correct. All right. Okay, I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray. A little bit of a firmer pressure over here. dark hairs here and there. individual little bits of dark in here and I'm going to want to take something a little bit lighter go over those darks and kind of make them a little bit more integrated and not look like they're floating on top that can look a little bit odd
All right, let's make this a little more, you know, just coming together a little bit better here. Um, uh, let's go in with the white and just kind of smooth this out. Even find myself looking into the the camera view, um, little screen on the camera, because it's just like hmm. kind of a second pair of eyes to uh, give me some some insight what I'm drawing, what it looks like. And I find if you'll take a picture of your drawing and kind of looking at, at it through the you know your phone or whatever you're using for your picture. Um, it's kind of like just, I don't know, getting a different perspective. I don't, it's like, you know, you're seeing the same thing, but uh, it will make little nuances of different things pop out and, and it's kind of helpful to know what you might need to approach next. If anything needs corrections or needs, you know, a little bit more of something. All right, kind of going back in with my, going in with my dark sepia. I'm kind of, you know, just seeing like a combination of cools and darks in here. Um, so I just want to add those in there. Let's do a little bit of the charcoal gray from the Pablos. So you can see how like I'm just constantly layering um, and we're burnishing, we're making it smoother, we're you know getting rid of the grain. I'd probably say charcoal is kind of a neutral dark gray. This really doesn't seem particularly neither um warm nor cool. So we added our layers, we kind of um, burnished it with a white. So burnishing it again is getting rid of that grain. And then we're adding more pencil strokes and that's kind of making it look more like it's coming to life, like all the lines really work together and not separately. So for it's, um, I wanna say it's not hard. It can be just a bit tedious, uh, hopefully in a relaxing and <laughs> pleasurable way just getting lost in like I was saying getting lost in your drawing and adding some light pressure around here
Um, going back in with the white a little bit more, smoothing it out. And I don't really feel like I need to add any, use a slice tool. I like to use a slice tool often, but I think it's kind of coming out really nice. You get lots of, get the look of all these individual hairs. All right, let's go in, let's, let's go in with that cold gray again, cold gray one. Uh, don't smudge your drawing with your fingers. Try to use a nice dust brush. And I'm kind of like emuls emulsifying, why am I saying emulsifying? Um, burnishing a little bit more. I think this little area all right we're going to continue to work around the face here and um, another reason I, I really picked this bunny rabbit is because it's it just um, well perhaps I mentioned this before but uh, worth saying again is that you know it's just this continuous fur that we could really really focus on um, I'm quite sure I said that before but anywho um, I am taking my cold gray one and starting under its eye so you can see I'm fanning out the fur and I'm going in in that direction and again I'm keeping the length so it's about a medium to light pressure that I am applying here so that medium to light pressure is going to allow me to add more layers and more layers you know get that furry look and then also get the burnished look as well um, if I pressed in too hard right away then I'm not going to be able to add more layers and it's going to look a little rough looking and we want to get this soft, cute, soft, cute look here. So you can see I'm really moving along. Go at your own pace. Definitely make sure you're going at the pace you want. Um, so I think another thing that I, I like to elaborate, I like to repeat things that are, you know, are worth worth repeating, uh, worth really knowing. And so we have a lot of cool grays that I was talking about before. So when I look at the reference photo, you know, I'm asking myself like, am I seeing more of these brown grays, red grays, that's gonna be a warm gray? Or am I seeing kind of like blues in the gray? Does it have kind of more of this cool look or does it have more of a warm look? Now with a lot of animals, they could have both. And we do see a little bit of both. And when we were working in this area, we were, were working with um, both of the warm and the cool, and we'll, we'll do so. But I see in this rabbit like predominantly cool grays. You know, I see almost like there's blue in her fur. And so, um, you know, a lot of Payne's gray as we were using um, so, you know, that is worth repeating over and over and over again, <laughs> literally, um, sometimes I think we, you know, humans have to hear things, um, a few times, a couple dozen times, or maybe a few hundred times, um, till it clicks, you know, it, it's not, not in any kind of insinuating that, you know, we're, we're dumb, it's, it's just that we need, um, that repetition, and we need that practice and that's all really it comes down to is um, good practice makes for really wonderful outcomes
And it's really about good practice, you know. There's the whole saying, practice makes perfect, but there's bad practice. Um, and that is a great thing about, you know, joining um, an academy or it doesn't have to be mine. It could be anybody's. Um, but that's really the benefit of having, you know, classes is because you're going to curb that, that learning. All right, so lighten the whiskers with that knitted eraser just so I can kind of go over it and then it kind of cleans up the area when I'm resting my hand, even though I'm resting it on this glassine paper. And you don't need glassine paper, you can use whatever paper you like. Um, you can use just like junk mail. As long as the junk mail doesn't have ink that's facing the side of your drawing, you want it probably blank paper. Um, if you have blank junk mail that you can chop up into little squares and rest your hand on. Now, when I am resting my hand on this paper, and sometimes you'll, you'll see me use all sorts of papers to rest my hand on, um, I'm not, I do slide it, but I'm not pressing down on my drawing so I don't smear um, any of my pigments because we'll need to be drawing over here and then I'll have my paper over her face so I don't wanna smear any of the pigments on her face. So that was a little gabbing on from myself there. But um, I really want to set you guys up for success and um, you know, hopefully you find this really interesting. So going in with the white from the Pablos. And again, if you have really any white, it works just fine. I just want to reinforce some of this white in here, kind of going back into the old area. And I will integrate the old area with the new area that we're working in now. You'll see me do that throughout the drawing. And I'll work on a section, make sure that it fits with our older section that we worked on previously. Got my panes gray. So working into the old area a little bit, bringing it into that new area. So just doing a few little pencil strokes here into the old area, slowly bringing them into the new area. Working with that Payne's Gray, um, light pressure. Looking for those kind of obvious patterns, you know, even it, even for like this, that just seems like it's just, it's kind of sprinkled everywhere, the darks, um, the darks. There's no major solid dark anywhere. You can kind of find patterns, areas that are a little bit darker than others. And, you know, I really try to go for that, really build up on that. And then you can go for those little nuances. Kind of goes right up to under her eye. Yeah, with the, it's kind of thinking with the people I draw and with the dogs and cats I draw, I give them fake names. <laughs> So whenever, and sometimes I don't, um, but I, I mean, I do kind of like to, well, I could like to give the people, um, fake names just because it's just like, I don't know, sounds a little bit weird if you're like, oh, drawing this brunette, drawing this blonde, um, seems 
normal to refer to them as um, as a name. And I was kind of thinking, like, what would I call this bunny? I actually didn't think of a name for this bunny. Samantha the bunny. I don't know. Think about it. Maybe I won't name her at all. Hmm. And we're definitely getting to that point where it really helps you to step back um, at any particular given time, but at least once a session, once during one of your, one of your drawing sessions and um, step back, kind of really review your drawing and have your reference photo side by side next to your drawing. Make sure it's, it's what you want it to be. Make sure like the values, the darks, the lights, the colors, and the patterns are all kind of where you want them to be. And it really gives you a good idea that you're going in the direction you want. So I'm going in a little bit lighter and with the paints gray, just kind of almost really adding a, you know, really sprinkling down this paint, paints gray right under her eye. Can, uh, can change it from a her to a him and call it Harry, Harry the bunny. <laughs> mm. Well, by the time I have this uploaded, I'll have decided. Um, definitely with my portrait drawings, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of decisions you make a lot of the way, uh, along the way, um, you know, you have a few things pre-planned. I mean, especially when you've done lots of portraits. Um, you know, I've done, <laughs> done my fair share. And one thing, you know, I never have um, planned out is like, you know, do I want to do a background? You know, do I want, do I want to like really amp up, you know, certain features of that animal? And um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is just, you know, you really figure things out along the way. Um, you kind of know generally what to expect from things, but I still learn a lot. And I'm, I'm always trying to better my skills. All right, so that was the Payne's Gray. Let's go. Let's go with a little bit of warm gray one. So I'm kind of seeing some warm gray under her eye and I'm also burnishing, not too hard, um, not hard at all. Maybe I shouldn't say burnishing. I'm adding uh, some nice warm grays in here. So kind of um, a medium brush, I would say. And a little bit back here, just below the ear. 
again, I'm going to go up into that old area to the, the area that we previously worked. Get those to really come together. I do want that Naples yellow to be <clears throat> continuous, so I'm going to just put a wee bit of it down here. So I've got that Naples, excuse me, Naples ochre. And if you have a polychromos, you can even pick like ivory from the polychromos or cream. Those colors also work very well too. So just a little bit. Um, a little bit more of the warm gray around here. Just like right under this right ear. go back to this Payne's, uh, Payne's gray, maybe regular gray. Um, so I have my little scrap piece of paper on the side of my drawing and I'll, I'll kind of swatch my colors, even though I have like a big swatch of all my colors, you know, sometimes it's really good to kind of look at what I got, what I need. Um, I'm going to go in with the Payne's Gray 30% from the Luminance because it just has a little bit more of that blue. Going up here above the eye. Just love that blue gray for the fur. So, so nice. And don't worry if you feel like you've added too much color and you're like, oh, their fur is a lot more lighter than that. I've added too much um, because that's where the power of the um, electric eraser comes in. And we'll definitely be using that here. to our white, kind of smooth this out a little bit.
little bit more warm gray down here. Well, let's go to our electric eraser. So also on my <clears throat> scrap piece of paper, I'll uh, just kind of clean off the tip of the eraser so there's no um, dark bits pigment on here that's going to get onto my, my paper. And I do that with light colored pencils. I do that with the eraser because the last thing you want is dark pigments going uh, onto your paper in areas that you want light. So I'm pressing really lightly here. I'm like barely touching the paper. And um, I just want to lift up just a little bit of pigment. sepia, my dark sepia from the polychromos. Um, I'm going to go back in. So really light little pencil strokes back and forth going along with that hair. So when I'm getting into these areas where the hair is kind of going more upward, um, you're just going to do tiny little pencil strokes in there to create that indication that the hair is moving um, upward and not back. And that's like a big challenge with hair is like when it change direc changes direction, especially when it's coming up, um, it's kind of like, what do I, what do I do? What do I draw? Like, what am I looking at? Um, and it's just kind of creating these little dabs of pencil marks, um, trying to find those shapes, you know, <laughs> that's where it really comes in, just trying to find the shapes that you're seeing in that area. Um, and it's just something that takes, you know, it takes a little bit of practice. But I, I'm going to tell you, it will come to you. Switch back to the Payne's Gray. So I'm seeing these <clears throat> little dark marks, just kind of like individual hairs you can see.
have um, Momo Kitty Cat. He's under the desk right now in his box snoring and it's really hilarious. <laughs> Uh, definitely the sleepy part of the day. Let's go back over it with that cold gray one. Kind of smoothing things out, burnishing things a little bit. I want, I'm curious if you guys can hear him snoring. It's not particularly loud, but it is like just below the, below the desk. It makes little piggy snorts. <laughs> That is looking pretty nice. Pretty soft, I think. What do you guys think? So kind of going back with that layering and the erasing and, you know, then layering on top again really uh, helps kind of build up that softness. Um, if you are going for that soft look, that is what you need to do is those layers. Uh, so I want to do a little bit more drawing with the eraser and I am going to say drawing with the eraser because um, I am creating more of the, the fur patterns in there, pulling out those highlights. back in with that Payne's Payne's Gray 30% I just stepped back and looked at my drawing from afar and really gave me some good perspective. I want to lighten it up a little bit more over here um, and maybe, yeah, kind of like mainly right there, I think.
better. Still gonna keep going here. <clears throat> Let's add a little bit more texture in there. Um, actually, I'm just gonna go in with the white. Just add that light layer there. Uh, then I'm gonna go in with this cold gray four. And because it's going over the white, it's gonna come out a lot lighter. So it means I can press a little bit firmer with it and kind of get that nice burnished look. Go back in with the Payne's Gray. And back up right under the eye. And on top of the eye. Um, above it. All right. And then let's get those little whiskers in there. So we have, see the one right, right about there. Nice sharp black pencil. There's one right there. There we go. And there as well. Okay. Let's continue on with the rest of her face. <clears throat> and again, I take my kneaded eraser every time, clean up the area. So these features on her face are so she doesn't have a whole lot of feature, <laughs> features on her face. It's particularly, you know, an eye and whiskers, loss of fur. So we just want to get in this, this beautiful layering of the fur and create that realism. So you notice from this area and then from this area, we worked we worked here with a lot more Payne's Gray and, and more dark tones. We worked with more dark sepia. We worked with the Naples um, Ochre. And here we didn't work those dark colors and uh, just a little bit of the Naples Ochre. A lot less of those in this area because we can see how much, you know, how much lighter it is. And part of me is like, hmm, maybe we could even go lighter. But it's looking pretty, pretty nice. I might go a little bit lighter. Um, but yeah, so kind of notice the different uh, values of the different areas here, the d uh, the darker fur here as compared to down here, and you know it gets even lighter on her face, and so we're gonna see more of that. So just really like training your eyes, training your brain to see the difference of values in the different locations that we're working. All right, so good old paint, uh, excuse me, good old cold gray one, creating that nice <clears throat> base layer. I feel like whenever I teach a tutorial, um, I feel like I always have to clear my throat constantly, um, and <laughs> probably because it's the most amount of talking that I do on a normal daily basis. Um, I'm a lot like a lot of other artists. I spend a lot of time by myself. And uh, oh, I, just, I think I do the most amount of talking when I'm teaching the tutorials. Kind of weird. Thank you. 
So going around that nose and mouth. It's almost like <clears throat> you can only just really get a hint of the nose and mouth. You don't really see it because it's um, just like at a slight angle, slightly towards us, but mostly not. So we we're just going to draw that little hint of the nose and mouth. seeing some warm gray there um, on I want to call this like the bridge of her nose or her her forehead I mean it is so slightly warm I don't feel like the cold gray underneath will affect the warm gray on top in any kind of ill uh, way I think it will be very much complimentary because we have both and um, I think it really works together yeah step away there and check some stuff at the computer um, when you upload all these videos to the computer it it takes hours so sometimes I have to like stop what I'm doing um, which can really interrupt the flow of my drawing here I'm going in with a warm gray one uh, hopefully as I was before and um, yeah I could like take hours to upload like one video um, and yeah it could be quite disruptive sometimes all right, let's go into the nose with a little bit of the Payne's Gray 30%. And I want to create the shape of the nose. It's kind of dark at the tip here, just a wee bit, just a wee bit. You're using really short pencil strokes here with kind of like a medium pressure going with that fur. So it kind of curves up and then it goes up here. And then just a little bit here. So things are very light here and I'm just going really light. And it's just hundreds of little, little pencil strokes. All right, liking the way that looks. And then kind of Down here, let's go in with a darker, I feel like there's almost like a little hint of pink. Um, and I think, you know, we if we saw her from like uh, the front, we probably would see some pink. Um, and if you really are adamant about putting it in there, you can just take a hint of pink. Yeah, just a hint and just place it in here. I, I think that would be perfectly fine. You know, it's, it's kind of about drawing what we see and not what we think we see. But then we can take our artist license and add a little something to it and make it, um, yeah, make it our own. But I think for the most part, I would stick to what you see. So this is a Caput Mortem Violet, and that's going to add a little bit more to that. But then we're going to go over it with the, with the grays again and tone it down so it doesn't look like she has a hint of lipstick on there. That's not what we would want. Um, all right, so back to the Payne's Gray. Uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go over it to kind of tone it down, but you're gonna get a hint of that undertone in there, of that pink and, and kind of darker colors in there. Kind of 
sharpen it a little bit because we are working in a tiny area. Yeah, so before it kind of, it almost was looking, we're putting putting like some lipstick on the, on the bunny rabbit. And then we toned it down with the Payne's Gray. Um, but you can still get a hint of it. So bring a little bit more shadow to that nose. And really just lightly brushing on this Payne's Gray. <clears throat> Let's go with the uh, Cold Gray 4. And I'm using really small circles around here because the fur is so short and it's coming straight out at us. So you can't see any individual furs and it's rather hard to kind of draw that, um, that kind of texture. I always find tiny circular motion uh, really helps with short fur that's coming out at you. And I mean, it's pretty darn light around here. So we want to pick up on these really minute values and let them kind of come through and shine because it, it's just going to give her a lot more depth, you know, in places where she might be very light toned, very light chroma. So you're getting just a little the hints of that fur around her nose or around her mouth. So going up between her face, her mouth and her eyes her eye, the one eye that we're, we're drawing that we can see, and adding some of the layers in there, sprinkling in some of the cold gray. So that fur is going straight up and following those lines. Again, just like last time, we're merging the, the previous sections in with the newest section. I want to make sure it all really is nice and cohesive.
Hmm, I feel like a little hint of Payne's Gray, just like little marks here and there. Going in with a sharp pencil very lightly, very light. And just gonna make these little individual hairs. Kind of going upward. I feel like that is the best. After a while, my palm gets a little, I don't know, not quite sweaty, but a little bit in <laughs> the paper. The paper I'm resting my hand on just kind of naturally sticks to it. So I can like pick it up and move it around without like dragging it around on the paper, on, on the drawing paper. So it just these little individual hairs. You know, again, I'm I'm going upwards with them, kind of up and over a little bit, but it's not perfectly in the same direction, so they have this more organic, realistic look to them. Also twisting my pencil to find that new sharp edge. Cute little patterns of fur, just ever so slightly. And it's just a little bit dark on this inner corner of the, kind of like the, the where the flesh is, where the skin of the eyes. I feel like I want to go over that area just a little bit. It's a little bit dark. Feels like it should be a little bit darker than it is. And you may have noticed the eye that I've drawn is a lot lighter than I think the eye in the reference photo. Um, I think it looks good as it is. And then you could also, you know, take a little bit of the dark indigo too and just kind of lightly, lightly brush it over that iris. And this is going to make the highlight pop out a lot more as well. So I'm just kind of going back and forth. Very, very light. So I think that's kind of really nice. You know, I do want to show a little bit of that catch lighting in that bottom of the iris. And it definitely, like, it makes that highlight pop out a little bit more. Don't expect your drawings to look good on the first try. You might come back the next day and you're like, oh, this needs to be a little bit darker and that needs that. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely normal uh, to come back and 
see things that need corrections. So um, I always feel like I need to remind people to to uh, relax, and, you know, really enjoy the ride. Okay, this is some white, so I just want to emphasize this highlight at the bottom. Okay, so I like that. I'm going to leave that as it is. Okay, um, I'm going to take that white once again. And, uh, Kind of burnishing things here because it's so much lighter. Um, I think it's not going to need a whole lot. Mm, yeah, really liking that. So I'm not going over the whole area, but just places where it needs to be smoothed out, maybe a little bit lightened. Um, and yeah, just kind of integrated with the, with the drawing the, as a whole. 